Honorable Chair, fellow parliamentarians, ladies and gentlemen, I wish to start my statement by thanking our host, the Parliament of the Republic of Serbia, for the organization of the assembly and warm reception. The title of the current general debate speaks for itself. Strengthening international law, parliamentary roles and mechanisms, and the contribution of regional cooperation. If we go back to the history, we will see the international law as a set of legal provisions regulating relations between nations always existed. As from very beginning of human civilization, all states understood the need of a rules of game between nations, which would regulate terms of their coexistence, allow them to feel secure and guarantee their development. Unfortunately, during the whole history of mankind, we have also become witnesses of many cases of violation of those rules by one state and indifference and reluctance of the others to prevent, to condemn, to address them, and as a result, hindering the development of not only of a specific region, but in some cases even the world and humanity. After the World War, the second one, the international community started to reshape and readapt the common rules of our mutual and beneficial coexistence based on the keystone universal principle of peaceful settlement of all the disputes among the states and hence prohibition of use of force. During these decades, both the heads of states and governments and leaders of parliaments have expressed on numerous occasions their commitment to the aims and principles enshrined in the UN Charter. And today, despite the criticism, international law is the only tool, the only set of voluntarily adopted rules which allow states to maintain peace and international security. Once again, invoking the title of the general debate strengthening the international law. I have to commend that at the moment we have urgency to talk about safeguarding public international law in general and human rights in particular. Dear colleagues, right now, when we are sitting in this plenary hall, one of our member states, Turkey, is launching military operation in Syria, in Kurdish populated areas of Syria. During the couple of days, hundreds of peoples are being killed. Tens of thousands are being displaced. Today, people in Kamishli and other Syrian cities are under the threat the same way as it happened in Armenian populated Syrian town of Kesab in 2004. Ironically, current outrages are committed at the same place at the same geographical area where soil and sand still hold the remnants of the victims of the Armenian genocide committed by the Ottoman Empire 100 years ago. And I, as a representative of a nation which has witnessed and survived one of the biggest tragedies of the 20th century, a crime against humanity, call all parliamentarians to raise their voice of alarm on the situation around Syria. <laughs> Respecting, following, and safeguarding of international law in the 21st century is not about economies. It's not about geopolitics. It's about saving lives of human beings, respecting their rights and freedoms. It's about saving morality of international community and the spirit of the United Nations. I call all the members and the assembly for action. I call IPU as an organization and each parliament represented here not to stay indifferent and clearly state the unacceptance of Turkey's actions and urgent demand to stop them. Thank you very much.